Would you say you're a good MP? Yeah, uh, I've been an MP for, uh, for nearly 20 years. I've been elected five times to the House of Commons. I wouldn't have been uh, if I hadn't been a good MP because I've always been elected against the odds. The media has always been against me. The establishment's always been against me. And yet five times I've been elected to my country's parliament. And yet I think you, that's rarely, good for of course, you rarely, of course, now turn up to vote. Well, I'm in parliament every day. I don't vote because almost all votes, more than 90% of them, are a vote between the Prime Minister's motion and the Leader of the Opposition's amendment. And I seldom wish to vote for either. Salaamu Alaikum. How are you, brother? Fine, thank you. Nice to see you. Hello, man. Chris Roberts from Sky News. How are you? How are you? Very yeah, yeah, nice to would see you, you. Would you describe on the spot George Galloway as a good MP? I would actually say um, he's a great MP. And um, I'm grateful for the community and he does come and visit us on a frequent basis and what, what can I say about him? He's a, lot, a, lot, a lot of people think of course that, that he just bangs on about Iraq and nothing else but that's not your experience. Not really, no. He comes to us, he talks so individually, talks about the, the community here as a whole. We discuss a lot of issues here, not just Iraq issue. You weren't put off through the Big Brother experience? Not at all, no. I actually enjoyed it, you know. So the other side of George Galloway is quite funny. Let's talk about some other issues in the news. I would guess you're not a fan of Jack Straw when it comes to the Veil issue. I thought it was a despicable uh, tactic by him. It was clearly designed to uh, trump John Reed's foray into Islamophobia a couple of weeks before. But the point is, you can't ask gay people not to hold hands or Jews not to wear hats or Muslim women who want to not to wear niqabs because we live in a multicultural country where people have to be free to do what they want to do with their lives eat what they like, dress as they like, pray as they like and the idea that you need to see someone's lip, lips moving in order to have a communication with them means that David Blunkett's not been doing much communication for the last 27 years and means that you've never concluded a business deal on a telephone. L let me give you a hypothetical. Uh, one of your constituents comes to see you and says, George, I know that my neighbor is planning uh, an act of terrorism. Would you advise them to go to the police straight away? I'd pick up the phone there and then and phone the police. And I'm sure that the constituent would wait there for the police to arrive. Nobody believes isn't in that terrorism exactly in what community. John Reed was asking communities to do to but, be well, alert he's the last man in the world able to make that demand of the Muslims because he's part of a government that is visiting terror on other communities in other countries as part of the Bush and Blair axis of evil he's the last man to talk about innocent people being harmed by explosions and sheets of flying glass and red-hot razor-sharp steel He's killed John Reed. He has been a part of killing hundreds of thousands of people in acts of terror around the world. But I'm in a good position to say to Muslims not to listen to the voices of separation and extremism and violence. We are the antidote to these extremists in the Muslim community. Do you know of imams in, in your constituency who are preaching that kind of message? Not at all. There are none. There are no imams in this constituency preaching that kind of message. You know, but there certainly people, aren't others, aren't there? No, people always look for an imam or a Muslim organization to blame for the radicalization of Muslim youth. All a Muslim youth needs to do to get radicalized is watch Sky News. Because when he watches Sky News, he sees Muslims suffering under British and American bombs. What do you think about North Korea? How do you deal with North Korea? Well, we said it would happen. Uh, we told you over and over again that if you attack countries, brand them as part of an axis of evil, and then proceed seriatim to attack them or threaten to attack them, well, just they're going mean, to... In, in defense of the United States, Bill Clinton did try for years mm. to engage with the North Koreans and didn't get anywhere. And it, it worked. Uh, it's the coming to power of George W. Bush and his elevation of North Korea into some kind of axis of evil, as if it was in any way connected to the other countries on that axis of evil, 
that is the source of the problem. It's a proliferation policy that we're following. But by threatening countries, we make them arm themselves. But this is coming back to a fundamental point I've made, that, that a lot of people think, well, the respect record is basically stuck on the line the world's problems are down to George Bush. Well, uh, many of the problems in the world are down to George W. Bush, and more and more Americans think that too, which is one of the reasons why he's going to get a good hiding in November in the midterm elections. Uh, now, I'm against all nuclear weapons. I'm one of the few MPs to be arrested and carried off to jail for protesting about nuclear weapons in our own country as well as in any other country. What I can't accept is that it's in any way remotely tenable that we say some countries are allowed to have as many nuclear weapons as they want, but other countries will be invaded if they try and get a single one. It's not tenable to say that Israel can have hundreds of nuclear weapons, but Iran will be invaded if it even shows a sign of ever uh, acquiring one. That's just not tenable. There is a public perception that respect is essentially a one-man party fighting on one issue. I think that's a problem for us. Uh, there's no doubt about that, because I'm the only MP, because I'm quite a bit better known than even the second best known person in respect, uh, we do have a difficulty with that. We deliberately are promoting other people within respect on television, on radio, on public platforms, precisely because we're aware of this uh, issue. And we don't want it to be a one-man band. There is no point in it being a one-man band. I'd be as well retiring and going into television or, or radio or something if, uh, if that's all it was going to be. And I don't believe that in a year from now that question will even occur to you.